AI and Deepin are so nascent, especially AI. Like we're in the very, very early stages of AI. Today, I sit down with crypto analyst Miles Deutscher to talk best AI altcoins with biggest potential. As I said, most of it is, is trash. <laughs> most of the AI coins aren't even AI. And find the true hidden gems. And these are all riskier, by the way. Like obviously, if you, if you want to stay safe, you go with the top ones. As well as undervalued gaming altcoins. You're going to have to be patient with gaming. But what I can tell you is that there are a couple major catalysts. And just how long until this Bitcoin bull market ends? We've never seen this uh, with Bitcoin peaking pre-halving. We've never seen the effect of the inflows of a spot ETF. Investing in crypto is risky. Never invest any money. You are not willing to watch go to zero. Miles, for those who don't know you, what's your background? What's your core competency? Yeah, so I'm a crypto analyst and trader. Some of you may be familiar with my content. I was uh, over on Crypto Banter for a couple of years, now on my own channel. Um, been in crypto for the last five years, started as a bit of a DeFi degen, got my hands dirty and wet in the crypto space during that Ethereum uh, slash DeFi wave in 2020, uh, was a was a survivor of that kind of 2019 brutal bear market period. And then obviously, you know, reaped the fruit of the 2021 bull market, probably didn't maximize it fully, uh, as I don't think any of us fully nailed, but obviously learned a lot through that period. And um, this cycle has, has been a great chance to, you know, hone my skills and, and continue to foray into a variety of, of niches in the space, some of which we'll talk about today, um, like D-Pin, AI, gaming, uh, but I pride myself on my fundamental um, analysis, my my Twitter threads. I put together research reports and, and also um, I have some uh, expertise on the technical side as well to underpin uh, my fundamental theses. Let's start with AI, although we will get to all of them. How does crypto benefit AI on a high level? You know, it's kind of funny because the current crop of AI protocols that we, we currently have in the market, I mean, you could kind of assert they're not really even AI. Um, they're kind of AI proxy bets that trade off this retail news hype and attention flow that comes from uh, the real world and the traditional AI sector. So th the current AI coins we have, I don't know if they're end game AI, but I certainly look you know, further down the track, two, three, four years, and I see massive intersections, whether that be ZKML, machine learning networks to enable these you know, big companies like Amazon and Google to, to tap into democratized uh, access to, to machine learning infrastructure. I see, you know, use cases in in identity and fraud proofs, you know, with deep fakes and stuff coming in. We need some sort of um, identification proof. So, look, there's huge upside, uh, I think, for the AI sector in general. I think it's important to differentiate between what's truly AI right now and what's, uh, you know, a pure AI proxy trade. Uh, but I definitely see, you know, massive synergies in, in the future. And that's why it's a sector that I'm looking to actively position myself in. Um, and yeah, I think in the next five to 10 years, we could see it emerge as, I think it's ranked 20 now, but... Uh, what I think could be, you know, a top 10 crypto sector that could capitalize around a, around a trillion dollars if we see a, a broader bull run. And you've been talking about AI crypto early, you know, your videos on your channel prove it. Today, what are a few AI altcoins that are quality, like legit quality in your mind? Yeah, so when I approach the AI market, I kind of differentiate between the the proxy AI trades because there, there are great ones like Fair, Adjix, Ocean, which are great for these, you know, shorter term trades when we get AI news. And between, you know, the pick and shovel infrastructure plays, which actually power AI. So when I look at pick and shovel infrastructure, the number one sector that stands out to me is Deepin, decentralized uh, private infrastructure networks. There's a few that I like. Obviously, you've got Render uh, as a more higher capitalized network. You've got a cash. You've got some upcoming ones that are super interesting, uh, like Athea. In the deep in space, you also have AOS Network, uh, which I think has a lot of upside alongside ATOR. That's another uh, deep in privacy network. So for me, deep in is kind of my pick and shovel infrastructure exposure to AI. Why is that the case? Because in order to power AI, you need compute. AI is a very compute in in intensive sector, right? It demands a lot of computing power. And with the computing shortage that we've seen globally, uh, you know, with NVIDIA be being the front runner, it's very expensive to run AI applications. So what these deep in networks do is they democratize access to GPU power, allowing AI networks to tap in and get the power that they need to function. Even networks like Tau, by the way, BitTense, the largest AI, AI protocol, you know, it needs compute power in order to operate as an effective machine learning network that can scale. So in terms of positioning, um, you'll notice a lot of my AI portfolio is actually in deep in. And, you know, if I want to take those shorter term trades, uh, I will look at the more speculative AI proxies. 
If you do want some lower altcoin picks, I'll, I'll scroll down the list. Uh, I've been trading Golem recently. And these are all riskier, by the way. Like, obviously, if you, if you want to stay safe, you go with the top ones. You know, your renders, your Akashas. Soon, Aether, I think, is going to enter. Arweave, they're building their, you know, decentralized um, uh, storage network. But, you know, going down the list, you've got Golem, RSS3, which is an AI indexing layer 2, which I've recently been building a position in. Not strictly AI, but as I mentioned, you've got Ator. Um, I'm not in these, but PAL... Uh, and 0XO, I know Becker and a lot of these other creators have been talking about them. So you, you can't really fade, you know, retail mindshare. Um, those are just some that come to mind. But, we, you know, we can dig a little bit deeper maybe in a, in a future video. And I do, do speak about these on my channel as well, uh, you know, when I come across these new altcoins. And maybe, so you named Akash, Render, Aether, potentially, that's a newer one. But those would be the high caps. And then you just named the low caps. Generally speaking... Like, what is your profit-taking strategy? And maybe this doesn't have to be deep in specific or AI-specific, but generally speaking. Yeah, I think, I think I'll think i touch on the, my AI-specific strategy and then, and then I'll touch on my profit-taking strategy in general. I think for AI, it's one of these really interesting sectors. If you observe the price action of AI so far this year, it's had three waves. It had that initial wave in January. It lulled for three weeks. It had another wave in February. It lulled. And then post-NVIDIA conference, we've seen a resurgence. So it's one of these very unique narratives. Uh, that that because it relies on um, attention flow from the traditional world where there's an abundance of AI news, it can have, you know, multiple rallies. So the problem with being too aggressive with AI trading, like getting in, getting out, is that you don't know when that next wave is going to come. I don't know when OpenAI is going to announce the next Sora type AI development that's going to send, you know, another wave through the AI space. I don't know if NVIDIA's earnings are going to come in August, which is their next earnings report, that's going to blow us out of the water and then we'll see another trade. So for me, it's just easier to gradually scale in over time and scale out over time. So taking that DCA approach to both entering and taking profits, my general taking profit strategy is accumulate on extreme red days and take profits into extreme green days. I, I tweet about this a lot on my Twitter. Um, basically, you should be getting into the, the plays during these extreme red days where these coins have, have exemplified strength on previous dips. That way you're getting into the coins that are likely to rebound the strongest. And then uh, conversely, when you do see the, these, these massive pumps, use that as a chance to position yourself out of weakness and into strength, you know, via funneling some profits off into, into stable coins. And that gives you the dry powder necessary to take advantage of these dips because we get these dips in the early stages or even middle stages, you could kind of argue we're in now of a bull market, especially around the halving. There is going to be dips. It's going to try and shake you out. Um, and that's why you do need to take, you know, profits on, on, on these green periods in order to ensure, you know, you've got the right capital to take advantage. That's exactly what I tell like new investors if they ask, hey, a piece of advice for the next cycle, take emotion out of it. And if you have a plan, stick to the plan and then accumulate the dips and then de-risk, take profits on the way up. So we went over Deepin, we went over AI. Was that the full Deepin list? Can we go right to gaming or any final words on those two mega uh, trends? Look, on, on deep and there's a lot coming. And this is, I think, what you're going to see across AI as well. AI and Deepin are so nascent, especially AI. Like we're in the very, very early stages of AI. As I said, most of it is, is trash. <laughs> most of the AI coins aren't even AI. There are some genuine, and, and I work behind the scenes, you know, working and talking, you know, with a lot of projects on a day-to-day -day basis. There are some amazing projects backed by the top VCs, Paradigm, Pandera, Hashkey, these a Delphi, these AI networks, which haven't even launched yet. And these are going to give BitTensor a run for their money. So if, 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 if I was the audience watching right now, I, I would definitely keep an eye out for these newer protocols that are coming out. Some of, some of which that I'm looking at are, are networks like Allura. I'm an investor in, in some of these, by the way, for full disclosure, including Athea. So um, Allura, I'm looking at. Uh, Spectral, I'm looking at. That's an AI uh, protocol that enables you to deploy smart contracts using AI. Uh, Allura is more of your you know, Tau type decentralized network, which, which could genuinely compete. Recently, we saw Game and Launch. Um, that's in the AI slash compute space. So there's lots of these new ones coming out all the time. So that's another strategy. That, that I would take into the into the deep in an AI realm because they're such nascent sectors. Gaming. If there's one easy connection I see in crypto, it's gaming because <laughs> investors are already in an online world. People are already in an online world and buying uh, things that they don't even own, in-game assets. So gaming-wise, what's your take this next cycle? Gaming is a funny one because it's been slow. I think a lot of people expected that big pump and, and we haven't really seen the season yet. You're going to have to be patient with gaming. But what I can tell you is that 
there are a couple major catalysts. You have the launch of Off the Grid, Godzilla, um, coming, and that's one of the first AAA titles, in my opinion. It's got the PlayStation and Xbox launch. Uh, you've got Chrono Forge, which is launching soon. I'm an investor in that. That, that looks like an amazing game. Uh, they have big partnerships. So a lot of these newer games that are coming out, I think could act as ecosystem catalysts for a broader wealth effect into game into other gaming coins. Think about what happened last cycle with Axie. Like Axie exploded. A lot of the other, like it's a rising tide lift all ships effect that resulted in a lot of these other um, gaming coins, you know, rising significantly in value, even though they weren't the ones gaining the users. So I think what gaming needs is these true AAA titles that that come to the market, like off the grid could potentially be, and, you know, offer the necessary hype to show people that, look, crypto games can succeed. They can have successful economies because I don't think anyone's quite nailed it yet. And they can get traditional user bases, but that takes time. Like the AI funding actually peaked in 2022. So the games, the studios that were building these games, they received capital from VCs to build those games in 2022. Do you think they could have built Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption or any of these like AAA titles in two years? No. The only companies that is into traditional gaming, gaming world that can churn out a game a year is FIFA and there's pretty much, or like Call of Duty and there's like barely any change between game to game. So you've got to be patient. Uh, I mean, even like, I think given the fact most games were funded in 2022, 2025, 2026 theoretically should be more of an inflection point even than 2024. But that is, that's not bearish. That's exciting. That means we're, we're truly early to, you know, the, the full growth of, of the gaming sector. And I think that's why now, um, it's a very interesting time to position, especially on these major red days, because gaming isn't so hot right now. A lot of these tokens are taking a beating. Even Mavia that pumped to ten dollars, we we saw it halve again. You know, giving investors an opportunity. I wasn't in the pre-sale, but now I get an opportunity to you know accumulate spot like everyone else. Uh, Echelon Prime, which I spoke about at three dollars, that's at twenty-one. But you know, these gaming studios, they're still in their relatively uh, nascent stages in terms of actually shipping you know products that people are using. So. I'm I'm pretty bullish on gaming. Uh, I'll give you a few picks. I know you're going to ask me that anyway, so I'm I'm going to front run you actually. I'm going to keep talking and give you a few picks. Okay, the way I view gaming is like a pyramid. So at the bottom is the base of the pyramid, pyramid, and this is where you take on the least risk. So this is where I invest the 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 larger percentage of my capital into infrastructure plays like Immutable, like Beam, like Superverse. These are plays that that are essentially encompassing a variety of games or facilitate the deployment or an operation of games that that's at the base then going up the risk curve the middle of the pyramid this is where you're, you're maybe putting less capital in but you're taking on more risk this these are your gaming studios so so these are things like echelon prime uh vulcan forged aether games like these kind of you know studios that have exposure to multiple games so aren't as risky because they're slightly more diversified but they've got more risk than something like like a beam or an immutable which is a infrastructure network and then at the top of the pyramid this is where you get the most gains where you put slightly less capital and these are your individual games now it's hard to pick a winning game but if you do hit one that's where you're going to hit you know potentially your 50 100 x's and in terms of individual games that there are a few ones i'm looking at alluvium i think the graphics are incredible shrapnel i think is is um looking like a super strong contender to be a top game this year you've got as i said some of the upcoming ones like chrono forge uh, Godzilla, you could almost put closer to the base of that pyramid just because um, Godzilla is actually a development company. Off the Grid is one of their games. They may have more games in the future. Uh, and then I'll just scroll down my list here and I'll see if uh, anything else comes to mind. Some of the games launching on Merit Circle Beam, uh, a super interesting, uh, you know, Forgotten Playland recently launched. That was one that I invested in. And I just think like, obviously, as you scroll down the list, you, you start going down the risk curve a little bit. Um, but that's where, you, that's where you get some, some, you know, opportunities to hit those higher multiples. So that's why I structure it like that. So kind of like, you know, the more risk you're taking on the less capital you're, you're deploying. So you always have a, a risk adjusted weighting that you're comfortable with in terms of your overall portfolio, but gaming's one we're going to have to be patient with, but once it finally pops, I think it'll, I think it'll surprise a lot of people actually. And that's why it's, it's in my top three sectors for, for this bull run. Miles, you listed a lot of quality games. Mo many I've heard of, some I haven't heard of. So I'm glad I brought you on today. Generally speaking, what is your, how long will this cycle last? Because as you as you name these quality projects, obviously, hopefully they'll be here multiple cycles from now. 
but where do you see Bitcoin topping and when? Yeah, it's a super difficult question to answer because I think there are so many variables right now. We've, we've never seen this uh, with Bitcoin peaking pre-halving. We've never seen the effect of the inflow of, inflows of a spot ETF. So we're kind of in a new paradigm for crypto where it, it's looking like a left-leaning cycle, um, having that, that pre-halving Bitcoin all-time high. Because it's so different from previous cycles, there's two camps you can be in. The first camp you can be in is, okay, the peak's going to happen earlier and the bull market's actually going to end earlier. And then there's another camp that you can be in, which is no, this is actually Bitcoin now starting to, to divert a little bit from this four-year cycle. And we may actually see, and, and I hate the word super cycle, but some sort of extended cycle where maybe things, maybe it lasts a little bit longer, but we see like sector by sector outperformance. Generally speaking, that's what we're seeing at the moment, by the way. A lot of the majors, like if if you know you're a viewer watching right now, you might you might notice your portfolio is not actually up as much as the indicators are suggesting. And this is because a lot of the majors, these major coins, XRP, Cardano, a lot of the layer ones, they're actually not really outperforming. It's the memes that are really driving the market right now. It's AI that's driving the market. So it's a very interesting space where we haven't even really seen an old old coin season yet. So in terms of like assigning a, a timeline to that, it becomes difficult because of the factors that I mentioned. But, you know, if I had to guess, if you put a gun to my head, I would probably say uh, some sort of peak Q4 to Q1 is indicative of, of the current timelines we're seeing right now. But something like AI, something like gaming, I could definitely see a peak happening many years from now because um, I don't know, maybe we don't have time to get into it too much, but like it's called the deep in flywheel. Actually, the longer these networks are established, the more users they get, the, the more their token price increases because it, it, they're reflexive networks, essentially. So we haven't actually seen that kick into gear yet. We haven't had a cycle to test that theory yet. So it very, mu it very well may extend in, into the latter years of this decade. But in terms of Bitcoin and crypto in general, I'd say Q4, but I mean, we're treading on, on new territory. So let's see, just keep your ears open. It's pretty... It's actually not that difficult to navigate because what you need is exit triggers. So the, an exit trigger that I like is the 200 MA. If Bitcoin starts breaking down on the weekly below the 200 MA, which I think is around 50K right now, that's a sign we're leaving a bull market and, and starting to enter a bear market. So as you start to see that reversal on Bitcoin, that could be an indicator for you to you know start scaling out or de-risking a little bit. So when we see the signs of the trend reversing, I'm happy to submit to the fact that the trend's reversed and we should de-risk. But this is a market where the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. So in a bull market, you, you've got to dance while the music's playing. If you're not dancing, you know, you're not maximizing the opportunity in front of you. So until the music stops, we'll keep playing the game. And if we get the signs of a reversal, we'll we'll click we'll quickly um, change our theses. And I think that's a big lesson that I learned from 2021, as I mentioned at the start of the show here. In 2021, I think me and a lot of others weren't quick enough. We didn't have a finger on the pulse when, when that major reversal happened. Maybe we didn't de-risk like we should have. That's a major lesson I'll take away into this cycle. When we do see a top, um, I'll be much more uh, you know, prone to, to de-risking and, and taking those moves to position myself accordingly. Miles, man, I, I love this perspective. Links for your channel, your Twitter, everything down below. I encourage my audience to check it out. I want to have you back in two, three months. We'll revisit some of these coins, some of these trends, but final thoughts for the Altcoin Daily Army. Final thoughts for the Altcoin Daily Army. I would say we're entering a, a, an interesting time. Obviously, we've got the Bitcoin halving. Um, it's kind of a weird choppy period. We are seeing, as I said, sector outperformance. So what I would say, my advice would be, be steadfast in your opinions. Build your conviction in one to two narratives. The biggest mistake I see a lot of people making in this market is they're spread too thin. I don't know, I'm contradicting myself slightly because I just listed like 20 altcoins, but they're very concentrated in two to three sectors. So if you're new to the market, try at least and become an expert in one or two niches. It doesn't mean you can't own layer twos and L1s and DeFi protocols, but try and build conviction in, in certain narratives and certain sectors. Because what I see all too often is people hopping and rotating bags. They'll get into one narrative, they'll rotate into another, they'll rotate into another, and then they'll find by the time that the original narrative that they held actually performs like gaming, which has been slow for six months, you know, they've already rotated out into AI and that now they're going to miss the gaming run. So build your conviction, build positions on red days, take profits when the market's green and don't hop from narrative to narrative. That would be like my, my, my final advice. And I think that's important for, you know, viewers watching that do feel tempted to rejig their portfolio every time there's a green day in a certain sector.